Now that you have received your allogeneic stem cell transplant and your counts are coming up, you may be eager to leave the hospital. This discharge video reviews what to expect and how to best care for yourself when you leave. Most allogeneic stem cell transplant patients leave the hospital around three weeks after receiving their cells. To decide when you may leave, your care team will review the following criteria. Your absolute neutrophil count should be at least 1,000 or higher. Neutrophils are white blood cells that help your body fight off infection. Your temperature must be below 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 72 hours. Temperatures above this may be a sign of an infection. Drink at least six to eight cups or one and a half to two liters of fluids each day. Eat small amounts of food and swallow all of your medicines by mouth without trouble. You must be able to do simple tasks, such as dressing, walking, and going to the bathroom, even though you may still feel very weak. Before leaving the hospital, you must have the following things ready. You must have a caregiver and a local place to stay that is within 30 minutes of MD Anderson. Your caregiver must be available 24 hours a day and able to take you to MD Anderson quickly if needed. Your local housing arrangements must be ready for you 24 hours before you leave the hospital. Plan to stay close to MD Anderson for about 100 days. Talk with your social work counselor if you need help finding housing. Your advanced practice provider will discuss the following patient education handouts with you and answer any questions you or your caregiver may have. Allogeneic stem cell transplant discharge instructions and foods to choose during and after stem cell transplant. When you leave the hospital, you will likely have your central venous catheter, commonly referred to as a CBC, in place until day plus 90. The CVC stays in place so the care team can continue to give IV treatments if needed, such as blood or platelet transfusions, fluids, and draw blood for lab tests. A CVC requires care every day. This is why you or your caregiver must attend a CVC care class to learn how to care for the CVC and demonstrate CVC care to a nurse with the Vascular Access and Procedure Center. Once you attend class and demonstrate care, you will receive one week of CVC care supplies and information on how to get more supplies. Talk with your nurse for information about class time and location. Your medical team will schedule you to have the CVC removed when you no longer need transfusions or IV fluids on a routine basis. You will need certain items at home, such as a thermometer for your use only, plastic wrap and adhesive tape to cover your CVC when you shower, alcohol-based hand sanitizer, box of face masks, and alcohol prep pads. Your caregiver can buy these items at a local grocery or pharmacy store. When you are ready to leave the hospital, the care team will provide you with one or two face masks. If you demonstrate CVC care successfully with the Vascular Access and Procedures nurse, you will receive one week of supplies and instructions on how to get more supplies. If this is not completed before you leave, you must do the return demonstration with the Vascular Access and Procedures nurse as an outpatient or come to the hospital to have your CVC dressing changed when needed. The night before you are expected to leave the hospital, your night nurse will draw blood for your lab tests around midnight. This is done to make sure the results are ready early and your discharge is not delayed if you need to receive fluids or blood products before you leave. On the day you are expected to leave, your advanced practice provider will meet with you to review discharge instructions, answer your questions, and schedule your follow-up appointments in the Ambulatory Treatment Center, also called the ATC for short. The advanced practice provider or stem cell transplant doctor will evaluate you again before you are discharged. You will sign discharge forms before you leave, and then patient transport will take you and your belongings to the discharge center. Your clinical pharmacist, commonly referred to as PharmD, will also meet with you on the day of your discharge to review the medicines you must take after you leave the hospital. Prescriptions can be sent to the MD Anderson Pharmacy for your caregiver to pick up or sent to your preferred outpatient pharmacy for pickup later. It is important to take all of your medicines as directed. The care team will give you a list of your medicines. Your medicine list may include the following. Antibiotics to help prevent infection antifungals and antivirals to help prevent other types of infections, medicines to help prevent stomach problems, 
tacrolimus to prevent graft-versus-host disease, and medicines for other conditions. You may also need to take a multivitamin. Do not take any medicines that are not on your list without talking to your care team. This includes herbal medicines, supplements, and over-the-counter medicines. There may be some medicines that you may take only if needed, for example, medicines that are for pain, nausea, and vomiting, or diarrhea. As an outpatient, you will return to the ATC for your appointment with your outpatient stem cell transplant care team. Be sure to arrive at your scheduled time. This care team includes an advanced practice provider, clinical pharmacist, and stem cell transplant doctor. You will have follow-up visits every day in the ATC for at least one week. This includes weekends and depends on your condition and test results. You will check in for your lab tests and clinic visits. The care team will see you after your lab results are ready. Your stem cell transplant doctor will see you once a week in the ATC. During this time, the outpatient care team monitors you closely. At first, you may spend four to six hours in the ATC at each visit. If needed, you will receive IV fluids and blood products. At these visits, the care team will review your lab results and do a physical exam. The care team will also ask you about your diet, medicines, and side effects, such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and pain. Tell the care team about any new symptoms or symptoms that get worse, such as extreme sweating, chills, cough, sore throat or runny nose, feeling lightheaded or dizzy, short of breath, chest pain, new sores or rashes, urine problems, or bleeding anywhere. The care team will answer your questions and refer you to other resources if needed. For immediate care, it is important that you go to MD Anderson's Acute Cancer Care Center right away if you have the following symptoms or call 911 if you cannot get to MD Anderson's Acute Cancer Care Center. Fever higher than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Nausea and vomiting that does not stop or get better with medicine. Extreme diarrhea that does not get better with medicine. Bleeding from the gums or nose that does not stop or blood in stool or coughing up blood. Pain that does not go away or get better. Chest pain. A cough that does not go away. Short of breath, feel lightheaded or dizzy, or rapid heartbeat. Graft versus host disease is a possible complication of an allogeneic stem cell transplant. This problem can affect many areas of the body. GVHD commonly affects the skin, gastrointestinal tract, liver, and the eyes. Contact your outpatient care team right away if you have any of the following signs or symptoms. A new skin rash, which may or may not itch. Skin or white of eyes turn yellow, which is a sign of jaundice. This means your bilirubin levels are high. Extreme diarrhea that does not stop or get better with medicine. Nausea and vomiting that does not stop or get better with medicine. Extreme stomach pain with frequent watery stools. Unable to eat or loss of appetite. Or changes in your vision. Common treatment for GVHD is steroid therapy. If your outpatient care team thinks you have signs and symptoms of GVHD, they will talk with you about next steps, which include tests to diagnose and confirm GVHD and a plan to manage and treat it.